Hi, my name is Gerald Simon. I am the founder of Music Motivation. It's a company I created to help motivate piano students of all ages to learn how to play the piano and to have fun learning music theory, learning how to improvise and arrange at the piano, and learning how to compose music of their own. The three main areas I focus on, one I refer to as theory therapy, the second I call innovative improvisation, and the last is creative composition. But what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about myself and tell you why and how I began creating what have become known as cool songs. I have piano teachers and parents who ask me all the time how, when, and why I began creating and composing these cool songs if they, as they have become known. And what I tell them is that it all began with a very difficult problem that I personally had. And I think many of you can probably relate to this. I was a piano teacher and my wife and I, we had been married just a few years, and I decided to come out with my first piano book. It was an introduction to scales and modes. It had scales and modes in all keys, and I thought it was a wonderful book. Maybe not everyone enjoyed it as much because it talked about music theory. But because of that, I created my second book, which was Variations on Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now, what happened as a result of those two books completely changed the way I taught piano lessons and the way I began helping piano students. And I'll tell you why. After I had completed those first two books, at the time I was teaching about 40 to 50 piano students and all of a sudden I began teaching more and more piano students. I had piano teachers who would contact me and they would say that they had a piano student who needed a little more motivation and they wondered if they could send that piano student to me and I said sure that would be fine. The parents did not want the child to quit and the piano teachers did not want them to quit either. And what happened was very interesting because I went from having about 40, 50 piano students to having almost 90, almost 100 at one point, which that's a lot. I mean, that's one-on-one -on -one piano students. The only challenge is these new piano students I would be receiving from the piano teachers did not want to play the piano. In fact, many of them told me they hated the piano. Now, they did not hate the piano. But they told me that they hated the piano and they would not play at all. They would come in and they would sit down during their piano lesson, they would fold their arms and they would say, I'm not going to play the piano. I would recommend every method book available, any that I could think of, any that had been published, they would not play from any method book whatsoever. I began telling them that we could, for fun, have them listen to a song on the radio or on their mp3 player and we could actually have them try to play by ear their favorite song. They would not do it. I then said what we could do is maybe watch a YouTube video and get them excited about playing something that they had seen on YouTube. They said no. I think they had reached the end of their rope so to speak and they in their minds, they were done with music lessons, completely finished, which is why their piano teacher and their parents had asked if they could come and take lessons from me. I think it was almost a last ditch effort to try and get them excited again. And I was at my wits end. I did not know what to do because my company was called Music Motivation and the parents and the piano teachers were expecting me to motivate these piano students. They did not want to be motivated. And I felt lost. As a piano teacher, and maybe those of you who are piano teachers, you can relate. I was trying to get them excited about playing the piano. And it did not matter what I did. Nothing worked. I'm a parent as well. And for those of you who are parents, 
you probably you probably know this as well trying to get your children to practice the piano and get them excited about the piano and so I can remember trying to figure out what to do and in one piano lesson most of these piano students who did not want to play were teenagers especially teenage boys and during one piano lesson I had an idea and it came to me and I turned to the piano student and I said let's try something completely different I am going to compose a song for you this will be a brand new composition no one has ever heard this song no one has ever played this this will be primarily just for you and they said really and I said but I want you to tell me the key signature I want you to tell me the time signature I want you to tell me what style of music you want what genre do you want it to be jazz do you want it to be rock do you want it to be pop do you want it to be a new age piece a classical piece you tell me what you want to play and I will compose a song in that style right now during your lesson I will compose the entire piece and then I will go to the computer I will print out in finale the notated music where you will have the music that you can then take it home and play the piece I composed for you and most of these teenagers they, they thought this was a fun game and they were excited and it was the first time I had really seen excitement from them because they wanted to either trip me up or they wanted to challenge me in a way and, and for me it was a challenge it, it really was a challenge every single lesson I was composing a brand new song for these students and so I remember the students would try to give me ideas or suggestions and they sometimes they would even tell me what notes I could or could not use I I really let these students describe in great detail what they wanted me to compose because they were going to be the ones playing it and I thought if they were going to be the ones playing it they should tell me what they want see that that's part of it figuring out what each individual student wants you cannot have something that covers everything for everyone it's very specific and I needed to find out what that particular student wanted what they needed from me at this point it, it was not about what I wanted to teach them I wanted to find out what they wanted to learn and that is the key what did they want to learn and then after they told me what they wanted then I could teach them accordingly at their level whether they were a beginning level intermediate advanced I could then in this case compose something that they would want to play and I remember I had one student in particular he told me I could only use four notes now, now remember I, I let these students really <laughs> tell me what they wanted to do and he said I only want to use four notes and I reminded him that he would have to play this and work on this during the week I would print it out send it home with him and he would have to practice it and he said okay and so I said what what do you want And he said I only want to play video game music and I said you only want to play video game music and he said yes I only want to play video game music and I said okay we can do that and so I said what are the four notes you want and he said play this and at first I laughed and I said you want me to compose something using C a flat F and G and I said you've got to give me something else I said that is not enough I, I said if I can only use those four notes it may not be that great of a piece and he said okay I'll give you one more note and I said perfect what is it and he did this and I about died and I said you want me to compose something using that and he said yes and I said what and then he said but that B you can only use that B four times 
in the entire piece. And he started to laugh. You know, remember, this was a game for these students, and for me it was a challenge, but he began to laugh. And I said, so you want me to compose something doing that? And he said, yes. And I said, what if I change the rhythm with the left hand, and what if I do only C, A flat, F, and G with the left hand, and with the right hand, I'll just rock back and forth from C to G. And then I will insert a B, but I will only do it four times because you only want it four times in the piece. And he said, okay. So then I actually composed this piece for him. Let me play it for you. I composed that during his 30 minute lesson. I composed that and then I went to the computer and I notated it. So within that 30 minute time frame, I had, it's just a one page song. We take a repeat. We do the entire song through once and then we repeat it. And so I sent it home with him. And I said, I want you to take this home and I want you to play it. And he said, okay. And I said, but not only do I want you to play it, I want you to understand the theory. And I, I talked briefly just for a few minutes. And I said, let's explain what the theory is as you're doing this, we talked about an octave interval. And I told him what the word oct means, octagon, eight, you know. And we talked about how an octave interval, it's the same exact note, just one octave higher, you know, where you go up one C to the next C. And I said, the left hand is just doing octave intervals. So we briefly described what the theory was because I said, I want you to know the theory. Remember, theory, therapy. I want you to know the theory. But then I said, I want you to play this. Just play around with it. See if you can learn it as it is. And then I gave him one more suggestion. And I said, if you perfect this, and if you can learn this this week, can you play it for maybe your parents or maybe a friend? And he said, he said, okay, maybe, maybe. You know, he did not want to do that. I put him on the spot and he said, I, do, I don't want to do that, but maybe I will. And I said, okay. If, if you can, that'll be great. He went home. I printed out the piece of paper. He took it home. The next week when he came back, he brought a friend with him. And, and I said, play me your piece. He played it for me. Not only was it perfect, not only was it polished, and it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was outstanding. But then, he began to tell me how he played it for his mom and he played it for his dad and he played it for several of his friends and one of those friends who happened to come to that piano lesson that day asked if he could sign up for piano lessons with me. And, and so I said, well, what, what did you think of the piece? And he said, I think it sounds cool. Those were his exact words. I think it sounds cool. And then he said this, he said, I would play the piano more if I could have more cool sounding music like that at my level that I could play. And for me, all of a sudden it was this, you know, aha moment because he said, if I had more music that sounded cool like that, I would play because he wanted to have fun, cool sounding music. He wanted to play fun, cool sounding music for his friends, for his family. But he did not want to play what he had been assigned to play by someone else. And for me, 
it it was really a humbling experience but it, it changed my entire outlook and perspective on piano teaching because I started realizing it's not about what I know yes I can help him learn the scales and the chords and the intervals and I can help him understand the theory but I wanted to help him understand what to do with it then I said with this cool song I can start to show you how to create cool music of your own we decided to call it game over because of course remember he only played video games and he wanted something that sounded like video game music now I did that with every single piano student all of a sudden those piano students who hated the piano and wanted nothing more to do with piano lessons, they began practicing every single day. Every week they were excited because I would be composing a new piece for them. I later began compiling them and putting them in books. I learned so much in the process. Because what happened is I began taking all of these compositions that I had composed in all of my piano students' lessons, and I began to take them and compile them into books. I came out with Cool Songs for Cool Kids, book one. And then I came out with Cool Songs for Cool Kids, book two, and book three. And then I came out with Cool Songs for Cool Kids, the primer level for more beginning, very beginning level students. And so I came out with all of these cool songs, and each book has 21 cool songs in the book. And each one teaches music theory concepts through the fun piece that I composed for the piano students. But what happened is I had these books and I began sharing these books with other piano students and talking a little bit with piano teachers. In the beginning, I wasn't sharing them as much, but I had piano teachers that began contacting me that had found out about these cool songs because their own piano students had either heard their friends playing some of these pieces or they had found out they had watched a video of me playing some of these cool songs and so I had piano teachers that began asking me where I could get these and so I had a distributor they were distributing them to all the music stores across the country and and I was sharing them on my website and I had a piano student that asked if I could put some background tracks to some of the cool songs I had composed. And so what I began doing is I began composing new cool songs and adding drums and guitars and adding additional parts until I had so many where I had about 86 cool songs that I did not put in a book. Most of them are actually not in any books yet. They're in addition to all of these cool songs that I've composed for these books. These are additional ones. And I created these minus tracks that the students could then play along and perform. And it was so fun for me, not only as a teacher, but a composer, to begin composing the music and adding a guitar part, adding drums, adding keyboard synth sounds that the students could then perform these cool songs for their friends. They could use an MP3, you know, and play along with the speakers. They could just put their phone and have the MP3 on their phone and play along. And then for them, it was as if they were playing with a band. They had the entire accompaniment because I created the background minus tracks and then I would give them the background minus tracks where they could play along with the fun, cool music. And they would have a drum. They would have keyboards, synths. They would have guitars, other instrumental sounds that would add a sound effect here or there and for them it became an experience it was more than just practicing piano all of a sudden they had these cool songs with the cool accompaniment background tracks and then they could perform those at their piano recitals at their piano concerts i had many that would perform them at their school talent shows where they would go up they'd sit down to the piano and begin playing on the piano, but then the overhead speakers would be playing the minus track that I had created and composed for that student. And they loved it. They enjoyed it so much. So that is how I began creating and composing 
these cool songs as they have become known because it was about the students. It was about connecting with each individual student and trying to come up with a way to motivate and inspire them. I soon discovered that what worked for one student actually would work for many other students. What I had composed and created, then I found that teachers began asking if they could share these, if they could buy these, finding out where they could get either the PDF download or the sheet music, that they could actually begin to have their students play these cool songs as well. So what I have done is I have, as of the filming of this video, right now I have 24 different books that I have come out with and most feature original songs that I have composed. I also have come out with several albums. I have about 10 or 11 albums I've come out with. Some are instrumental where it's just me playing the piano, new age, techno pop, I have a Halloween album, and I've come out with books as well for the piano students where they could play along with these minus tracks. So I have a Cool Songs for Cool Kids series. We have the primer level, book one, book two, and book three. And they're organized where the books begin in a simple, easy to understand format. They're all just cool songs I've composed, but then they progress and get more difficult as you go along. Currently, I am in the process of creating minus tracks for all of the pieces from the books, the primer level, book one, book two, book three. And then we get into cool songs that rock, book one, and book two. I'm in the process of creating the minus tracks for these. What I have already created, I have 86 cool songs, additional cool songs that are not in these books, and I've created the minus tracks for those pieces, plus I have video lessons I have filmed where I filmed myself teaching the students how to play each of those cool songs going through where each video is anywhere from maybe eight, 10 minutes long, up to almost an hour. So each video lesson has me teaching them the cool song, playing with the minus track, that the students can play along with the minus track. I have the minus track set at performance speed with the piano. I have the minus track set at performance speed without the piano, so they can play and add their piano part, and they can perform at a piano recital, piano concert, whatever. But then I also have the cool song at practice speed or practice tempo where the speed has been cut in half, where the students can play along with the cool song, the cool instruments accompanying them at practice speed. So this way the students are then able to practice and work up to performance speed. So I have this right now as a cool song package where I have a beginning level cool song package. It includes primer level cool songs and then beginning level cool songs. And it also includes the Cool Songs for Cool Kids primer level book, which has 21 cool songs in addition to the 19 or so cool songs in that package. So almost 40 cool songs in the primer beginning level package. I have Cool Songs for Cool Kids intermediate level and it's more for late beginner to early intermediate level. And that includes all of the cool songs. I think there are probably maybe only 15 cool songs with the minus tracks in that package. But then on top of that, it also includes cool songs for cool kids, book one and book two. Each book has an additional 21 cool songs. So you have the 15 cool songs with the minus tracks, and then you have an additional 21 cool songs in book one and an additional 21 cool songs in book two. The last package is a late intermediate to advanced level cool songs package. Now this late intermediate cool songs package, it has the most cool songs because I try to quickly get students from beginning level up to intermediate level. And in this intermediate level, we have, I think, almost 50 cool songs that have minus tracks where they can play along with these cool songs. And then we also have Cool Songs for Cool Kids book two, sorry, book three. And that only has 10 cool songs. 
They don't have minus tracks yet, but I am in the process of composing minus tracks for all of the cool songs, almost 76 cool songs between the primer level, book one, book two, and book three. I'm coming out with minus tracks that will soon become available that students can play accompaniment patterns with each of those cool songs as well. Now, in addition with the intermediate, the late intermediate package, piano students can actually have my Cool Songs That Rock series, where after they've played the Cool Songs for Cool Kids series, they can move to the Cool Songs That Rock. All of these pieces were composed during piano students' lessons, and I composed them to help motivate and inspire piano students. And it's interesting, the title of the series is called Cool Songs for Cool Kids, but I have adults who love playing and performing these cool songs. So really, it's cool songs for cool kids at any age, any level. We have primer, we have beginning level, we have intermediate, and we have advanced. But I tried to help create fun, cool music that would be in a style that the students would enjoy. Over and over again, I found in my own teaching, and as I would go and meet with other piano teachers in their studios, I found that piano students wanted to understand and learn more about those three areas I talked about. Music theory, improvisation and arranging, and composition. That is why all of my books that I come out with and all of my blog posts on my website, all of my videos on my YouTube channel, they all focus on teaching music theory the fun way. I refer to it as piano fundamentals, emphasis on the word fun. But it's about music theory. It's about arranging and improvising. I tell students I want them to learn how to take a song and play around with it. Or they can take one song and they can play that same song 100 different ways. I actually, my most recent book I came out with, my 24th book is titled 100 Left Hand Patterns Every Piano Player Should Know. And the subtitle says, play the same song 100 different ways. It includes my fun fake book, which has 100 songs in fake book format, where you only have the right hand and you have chords written above, but you don't have a left hand. Because the students are encouraged to then fake the left hand, where they can take any of the 100 left hand patterns that I have created in the first half of this book and they can apply it to the songs from the fun fake book. It's about helping them learn these left hand patterns and then how they can start to play around with them, how they can arrange the music. Again, for me as a piano teacher and as a parent with my own children who are trying to learn to play, I have found that if I can help them play something they want to play or something that sounds like the music they enjoy listening to, instantly that's half the battle. But then, once we get to that stage where they're playing these fun, cool songs, then it's helping them understand they can take that theory and they can apply it to begin to arrange music of their own. They can compose music of their own. And they're building blocks. See, it, once you learn the music theory, you can start taking the music theory and applying it where you can begin to arrange and create music of your own. And then from there, once you can take that music and you can arrange it, well, then you can start to see how you can take and create and compose music of your own. One leads into the other and they work hand in hand together. And it is so amazing to see what these piano students are learning, what they are doing, and then to have them come to me and ask if they can compose a song or if they can take a left hand pattern from this book and they can start to arrange a piece of their own. Instantly, it becomes their music. It is no longer my music or my composition, something that I have created. It is theirs. And what is so fun is that is when they begin to accelerate and move so quickly because they love music. It's their music. And that is the biggest key, trying to motivate and inspire piano students of all ages, whether we are younger students, whether we're in our teens, young adults, or whether we are 
older, more mature students. I had a piano student. He started piano lessons with me when he was 93. What an amazing example. He came to me and said he wanted to learn how to play jazz music. He had either heard me play or perform somewhere and saw me doing something like and he saw me playing and performing and just playing around with the blues scale and so he asked if he could learn how to play jazz and blues and I said sure and I told him a little bit about modal jazz and how we could start to play around and do some things And I started to talk to him about what we could do with the piano to really help him learn more. But I said, can you actually move your fingers? I, I mean, he was 93. And he held up his hands and he smiled and he wiggled them and he said, all 10. And I said, okay, good. And it was so fun. He had to have his children or grandchildren bring him to lessons every week. But he would light up when he would walk into the room because he was so excited about learning jazz, something he had always wanted to learn how to play. And I tell adults, you're never too old. It's never too late. He took piano lessons starting with me at 93, and he took lessons for almost a year, and then he did not show up for piano lessons one day. And I, I didn't think anything of it. And I think I was so rushed that I didn't even call to find out why he wasn't there. But the next week he didn't show up either. And then I called and I found out that he had passed away. And for me, it was such an amazing example of someone who, even though they were 93, they wanted to start. They wanted to do something and they continued he continued playing and making music of his own until he died. And, and for me, it was such a humbling experience because I saw that you're never too old to learn something new. I look at these young students and I think, you have so much potential, you have so much possibility. And I'm so excited because they can learn so much and they can be directed and shaped and molded. But at the same time, I want them to tell me what they want to learn, what they want to do, where they would like to excel. I have some piano students who come to me who only want to learn about hymns, and they want to learn how to take hymns and arrange hymns of their own. So we work on arranging hymns. I have other piano students who only want to learn about jazz and blues, so we only focus on jazz and blues. And most of our time together, I'm just playing from fake books or league sheets or we're turning something on the radio or turning something on YouTube or they pull up their phone and we just play and improvise where we're taking the theory and we're applying it to what we are doing. I have other students who only want to play pop and rock and I say great and they tell me what they want to play and they bring their music and we work on their pieces. And then I have them working on these cool songs I've composed as well. And it complements what they're doing because they're learning the theory through the cool songs and how to apply it. That then they can apply that information with any song they want to play. But it helps get them excited. So I would love to have you learn more about these cool songs. If you go to my website, it's musicmotivation.com. I have a tab, musicmotivation.com slash cool songs, where you can learn more about these cool songs that I have composed and created already and the different packages I have. But also, you can learn about an, a monthly subscription that I've created where I come out with a brand new cool song every single month, where I will come out with one to two new cool songs that have minus tracks accompanying what I've created and composed where the piano students are playing along with drums, they're playing along with guitars, and they're playing along with all of these synth keyboards, these instruments, to create a fun, cool sounding, fully orchestrated piece that the students can then take and perform and play around with. 
And then, not only do they get the PDF each month with the monthly subscription, they get the new PDF each month, but then they also get to have the MP3 minus tracks, and they have the video lesson of me teaching them this fun, cool song that I've composed. So I'd love to have you check that out. Again, it's musicmotivation.com slash Gerald Simon. I'd love to have you look at that. And you can see past compositions that I've composed. And you can look at some of the books that I have on my website, musicmotivation.com slash shop, where you can see all of the cool songs that I've composed in other books, other styles, from New Age to hymns to pop, rock, jazz, blues, a lot of fun different styles. So I would love to have you check that out. My music is available to stream on all of the streaming sites from Pandora to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon. Check those out. And then my books are available from my website, musicmotivation.com, as PDF downloads. They're also available as spiral bound books and also as piano studio licenses for piano teachers and their studios where they can then purchase the studio license and print out all of my books for the piano students in their studios. They can purchase individual studio licenses for one book or for all of the books and purchase the entire Cool Songs suite that they have access to all of the music that I've composed so far. Plus, every single month I have the new Cool Song I come out with. So I would love to hear what you would like to have me compose. Every month I receive requests from piano teachers and piano students all over the world telling me what they would like me to compose. What style, what genre. I'd love to hear back and get your feedback and thoughts. And that will help me as I compose new cool songs because I want to compose them with you in mind. Thinking about if you are a piano student, what your needs are, what your wants are. If you are a piano teacher, what do your piano students want to play? What style of music, what style of instrumentation and orchestration do they want accompanying them as they are performing and playing? And if you are a parent of a piano student, I want to find out what gets your child or your teen excited about playing. And I will compose music specifically to help meet their needs. Feel free to send me an email. Let me know what style of music you would like to have me compose. And I will compose a fun, cool song. And I may be backed up a bit. I have a lot of requests from piano teachers and piano students and parents of piano students all over the world, but I am trying to compose as many of these as I can in various styles. Send me an email, Gerald Simon, J-E-R-A-L-D-S-I-M-O-N at musicmotivation.com. I'd love to hear from you and, and find out about your story. If you are a piano teacher, what are you doing that works for you in your studio? What are you doing where maybe you could use a little strength, a little encouragement, maybe a little help? I am continually creating new cool songs and new resources for piano teachers to help them learn music theory and teach music theory the fun way. Again, I refer to it as piano fundamentals. Remember those three areas that I focus on. One, I refer to as theory therapy, where I help teach music theory the fun way. The second I refer to as innovative improvisation. And that is where I teach improvisation and arranging to help students learn how to take a song, as in my 100 Left Hand Patterns book, and be able to play the song 100 different ways in any key signature, in any style, using any chord, any inversion. It's a fun, fun way to have the students really learn how to improvise and have fun doing it. And the last area that I like to focus on, I refer to as creative composition. And again, creative composition is helping them learn how to compose. I've heard from piano students or piano teachers that say they don't compose, they never compose, they never want to compose. Some say that they would love to compose, they just don't know how to do it. And I am trying to help teach them how they can compose music of their own. When I was younger, I had a piano teacher that allowed me to play one of my own compositions. 
during our spring piano recital that we had. And it was so effective for me. It was one of the biggest motivators and influencers in my life with my music because I played and performed the, the new composition that I had composed and instantly I had people that came up and said, you composed that? That's your song? You wrote that? And, and they, they were shocked. They were amazed. And they said how wonderful it was. They said, your composition was beautiful. Your song was amazing. They didn't say, you played Bach beautifully. Oh, you, I love what you did with Beethoven's piece. No, no it, it, was, it was my piece. I had ownership of my composition. And instantly, all of a sudden, I was so excited because it was my song I was sharing with everyone who was listening. And that motivated me so much. It inspired me and helped me continue to compose music. And I found joy staying at the, at the piano, composing songs, and then understanding the theory and trying to, uh, I was one of those weird teenage boys where I would take my paper out money and I would go use that money to get music theory books. Or I would try to find the music theory books that my father had and I would try to read through them and learn everything I could about scales and chords and modes. And I loved it. Uh, again, I'm weird. I, I, I admit that. I, I know I'm weird, but I, I loved it and I enjoyed it so much that as I would start to play something or perform something and people would ask me how I was doing this or playing this song or coming up with this chord progression, I would just say it's, it's just the theory. It, it's understanding the key signatures, understanding the scales, the chords, the modes, knowing what to do with it. And again, it's, it's that practical application where you learn the theory on one side but it's how can you apply it. So with these cool songs I've composed, I try to teach how to apply the music theory. So I hope you enjoy watching this video. Rewatch this video if you have any questions or if you'd like to learn more. But if you have any questions about it, please feel free to visit my website. It's musicmotivation.com. You can reach out to me at any time. Again, my email is Gerald Simon, J-E-R-A-L-D-S-I-M-O-N at musicmotivation.com. I would love to hear from you. Also, I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is youtube.com slash Gerald Simon. Again, youtube.com slash Gerald Simon. There's a link down below. Every week I'm coming out with additional piano fundamental videos where I share fun music tips on how to play a C major chord, but then what you can do with it how to take a C major 6th chord or a C 6th chord or a C minor 6th chord and play around with it where I could take a C 6th chord and then I could do something where I create a walking bass and I add a minor 7th interval up on top and then maybe I want to use the C major blue scale with the right hand We can take the theory and apply it the fun way. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this introductory video about who I am, what I hope to accomplish, and why I have started creating all of these cool songs as they have become known to help motivate and inspire piano students. It's about taking a piano student who may not be as excited about piano, not necessarily because the way they've been taught is incorrect or not necessarily because what they've done in the past hasn't helped them. It just hasn't really worked in a way to enable them to get excited about the music, to make music their own, and then to have those moments where they can share that music with others. Again, when I have piano students who play one of my cool songs and it has all of the accompany minus tracks that go along with it and they share that play it at a, an assembly all of a sudden they they are walking on cloud nine because they've just performed not only a piano solo but they performed with speakers 
playing and blasting out guitars and drums and this fully orchestrated piece. And, and instantly, they're on top of the world. When they perform at their piano recital, and everyone else is just performing a piano piece, and they show up and they have either a little speaker they bring along with them, or if they're in a building where they have a surround sound, and they can play along with the minus track, and there are four clicks right at the beginning, so it has the clicks and then they start playing along. Instantly, it takes the you know somewhat perceived boring recital, and all of a sudden, it comes alive. And the people say it's unlike any recital they've ever been to. I refer to my recitals as piano concerts because they really turn into concerts where the students are performing these fun, cool sounding pieces and they're playing along with minus tracks. That is the key to get them excited and to get them progressing and moving forward where they can play with these fun, cool sounding pieces. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Again, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about anything, but visit my website, musicmotivation.com, to find out more. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. See you.